Thank you so much for joining. This is the seventh annual What Drives Her program and award ceremony at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show. I've had the privilege of partnering with Scotty Reese and A Girl's Guide to Cars on this event. So I appreciate it very much. It's been a great partnership. And I also want to give a special thanks to Nissan for being the presenting sponsor of What Drives Her 2024. Well, thanks to everybody today. Uh, you know, we, we are going to celebrate some incredible uh, people today. Um, but I have the honor and privilege, just for just a moment before we kick off, to recognize a truly exceptional individual who has left a lasting mark on the Chicago Automobile Trade Association and the Chicago Auto Show, not to mention the entire automotive community. It is with my great pleasure and a deep sense of gratitude that we present the Lifetime of Inspiration Award to a remarkable leader, mentor, and visionary, Mr. Dave Sloan. As he's making his way up, I'm gonna mention a few more things. Dave is not just a name associated with the Chicago Auto Show. He's synonymous with dedication, leadership, and innovation. As many of you know, Dave has been a driving force behind the Chicago Auto Trade Association, who has produced the Chicago Auto Show, and devoted for over 30 years to the organization, starting in 1993 as Executive Vice President, and then in 2020, and sorry, 2010, becoming the President and General Manager of the Chicago Auto Show. Under his guidance, the show has grown and evolved to be the premier consumer auto show in the country. What sets Dave's apart is not just his professional accomplishments, but the legacy of mentorship he leaves behind. It takes a special kind of leader to recognize the potential in others. Dave, your legacy is not just about the car business, but the people you've inspired, nurtured, and propelled into leadership roles, and I'm a prime example of that. I'll be forever grateful. Even though it's bittersweet, we wish him all the best as he will officially be retiring this April. And in recognition of Dave's lifetime of inspiration, dedication, and visionary leadership, it is my privilege to present him with this Lifetime of Inspiration Award. Okay, at this time, I'd like to bring up Scotty Reese and we'll get things rolling. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. How are Hi, you? Hi, Scotty. I'm doing great. Happy Chicago Auto Show. It's so great to be back. And it's not a blizzard. The, yes, I hear the weather is quite nice outdoors. We haven't been outside the convention for maybe a couple days, but no, it's but looking it is, good out there. It is beautiful. And it's great to be back here with you guys and recognizing what drives her, women who are changing the automotive industry from the inside. And it's not just women, it's people. And also our great panel discussion, which I have seen the data, and I can't tell you how excited I am to see the, the numbers that you guys are gonna see pretty soon. But before we get started, let's do a little bit of where are they now. So this is our third What Drives Her Awards. Let's talk about our previous winners. So the first winner was Linda Zhang um, at Ford. Where can we see her work on the floor? Well, Laura, uh, she is with Ford, so we can see her in the Ford display. Yes, the F-150 Lightning oh, right. is her baby. And Crystal Wyndham of Cadillac, where can we see her work? The Cadillac uh, IQ, which is a new EV SUV out there. The Escalade IQ, which is right back there. And if you haven't seen it, you have to see this car. And then uh, Sue Mead, who is here with us, was our first winner for Best in Craft. And you can see her. She just came back from King of the Hammers. Uh, which is probably one of the most grueling off-road rallies that there is. And Kristen Shaw, who's not with us today, uh, was our best in craft last year. You can see her in the pages of Road and Track and Car and Driver, among many others. And then our um, best automotive retail. So our first winner was Megan Dieters. And then our second winner was Soledad Romero of Romeoville Toyota. And, but the big news in best, uh, best Retail was how many 
nominations did we get this year for that award? Right, so this year we had 66 nominations for Best Retailer Award. So that was by, by far the highest volume of nominations we've received to date. Who would guess that there's 66 women working in retail and automotive in Chicago, right? It doesn't seem like there's even that many women, and yet there's that many women who are deserving of a nomination. That's pretty amazing. And then our Ally Award, which was the first time we recognized uh, Automotive Ally last year, was Jenny Newman, who is with Cars.com, and now it's called... Well, unfortunately, Jenny's sick today, so... She couldn't be with us. The company transitioned to Cars Commerce, and Jenny and her team were a critical part of that transition. So it's exciting to see our winners moving on to these uh, much more uh, ambitious roles uh, from the recognition. So that's a little teaser for our awards that are coming up after this. But I want to ask you a question. Is the auto show important? That is, a, that is a great question. Well, for any of uh, you who are at the Mama Breakfast this morning have, have probably already heard this, but yes, the auto show is extremely important. Um, it brings a lot of people through these doors to see the latest product, cars, trucks, SUVs, but not only just to see it, but to experience it. So we have three uh, test tracks indoors, three outdoor test drives, playing experience, and of course, people are here to shop. And that is what an auto show is all about, isn't it? Right. And so... Why is an auto show important to customers or consumers? Well, you can experience so many of the latest products all under one roof. And I think that, you know, it's so fun for me to watch the, as the doors open and all the consumers that come through these halls, um, their eyes just light up because there's so much to learn about the latest and greatest technology. But of course, also, if you're looking for a new vehicle, whether that's an EV, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or your good old gas power vehicle, you can experience them all under one roof and take test drives and ride along um, on one of the indoor test tracks. So all things in one day that would take you like months to do if you were going to do it on Saturdays. And why is, we, we, we get fo- focused on the cars, the consumers, the shopping experience. Why is the auto show important to dealers? Well, uh, the Chicago Auto Trade Association that produces the Chicago Auto Show, we're an association of new car dealers. And dealers know that the Chicago Auto Show jumpstarts the spring selling season in Chicago and in many markets you know, across our country. And it sells cars. So, you know, to the dealer, it's very important. To us, it's important. And hopefully to manufacturers, it continues to be important as well. Because I think at the end of the day, we're all in the same, same end game is to sell more vehicles. It sells cars. And that is really why we're all here, is to sell cars. All right. So with that, let's get into the topic of why women buy cars. And with that, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Kathy Gilbert from CDK Global. Kathy? All right, so let me just say, first of all, welcome. This will be my seventh year standing on the stage representing Chicago Auto Show and the What Drives Her event. So thank you for being here to celebrate with us. So as many of you know, women influence about 85% of the decisions that are made as it relates to buying a car, and they actually purchase 62% of those vehicles. So what we wanted to do today was to really talk about what is it, you know, what drives a woman to buy a car. And I'm joined with three illustrious industry leaders, and we're going to talk about that subject. So let me go ahead and get uh, our introduction started. So first, Trudy, all right, me and this mic got to get it together, so give me a minute. So Trudy Hardy is the Vice President and Region America's Head for BMW Motorrad. Trudy assumed the position of Head of Region Americas for the BMW motorcycle business in July of 2019. In this position, she is responsible for managing all aspects of the business operation, including sales, service, marketing, product strategy, and dealer development for the United States, Canada, and Latin America. Prior to moving to BMW Motorride, Hardy was the Vice President of Marketing and Product Strategy for BMW North America from 2013 to 2019. Hardy joined the BMW Group in 2001 to relaunch the mini brand in the United States. She is responsible for brand strategy and marketing communications for one of the most iconic brand launches of all time. Over the course of her 20 plus years in career in the automotive industry, Hardy has received a number of distinguished honors 
ranging from Gold Lions and Gold Effie Awards to being named one of Ad Week's magazine's brand geniuses. Hardy earned her bachelor's degree in marketing from Rad Ramapo College and is an active member of the Board of Governors for the college and is a member of the Alumni Advisory Board for the Annisfield School of Business. Hardy is a proud, proud mom of two children and enjoys scuba diving, riding motorcycles in her free time. Please join me in welcoming Trudy. Thank you very much. Our second panelist, Amy Amada, she's the Chief Revenue Officer of Productions Plus. She, be, she brings more than 25 years research, uh, research experience of working with clients to solve problems, business challenges via data and insights. Ms. Amada leads the Research and Insights Division at Productions Plus and works closely with clients to use insights for shaping strategies, guiding product development, and developing return on investment. Insights captured via measurement systems designed for live events and consumer engagement allows for a more complete story about the impact of the auto shows and experimental marketing events activations. Prior to joining Productions Plus, Amy led YouGov's Washington, D.C. office. She has also led the D.C. office for KRC research and worked hand in hand with IPG sister agencies such as Weber, Snackwick, Powell Tate, and, Col and was it Golan Harris? Uh, if I could read, it'd be all right. She has also held leadership positions at Harris International and spent almost a decade in-house at Freddie Mac. Please join me, Amy. Thank you. And last but definitely not least, we have Trisha Jung, Senior Director for EV Strategy and Transformation with Nissan. In this role, Jung leads a new group established in 2001. In, <laughs> no. She leads a new group established in 2022 to deliver upon the company's electrification objectives as part of its long-term vision, Ambition 2030. Young has valuable experience with EVs, previously overseeing the launch of LEAF, Nissan's pioneering all-electric vehicle. Automotive News named Young as one of 100 leading women in North America, which is a significant accomplishment, and she has received Nissan's Global President's Award for leadership-based LEAF successful market launch. Since joining Nissan in 2002, Young has held many roles across the Cross functions, and for the last seven years, she has served in leadership roles with Infinity, most recently as Director, Model Line, Pricing, and Incentives with Infinity USA. She holds two bachelor's degrees in, in economics and systems engineering from the University of Pennsylvania and an MBA from the Harvard Business School. Let's give our panelists one more round of applause. Thank you. So as we get into the conversation about what drives a woman to buy a vehicle, I want to start out by really understanding and sharing that there are many, many reasons, whether it's personal considerations, you know, safety, reliability, it could be personal, um, it could be practical considerations, personal preferences, societal or cultural influences, and then individual motivations. But what we wanted to do was to really take a moment to dive a little deeper into the data. So many times we talk about what really drives a woman to buy a vehicle in our industry. And so now we want to deep dive a little bit. And I'm going to first ask my question to Amy. So Amy, what is it first about the Chicago Auto Show that is so important for women that are looking to buy a vehicle? Well, it's so funny you should ask. Because we asked a bunch of women who came to the Chicago Auto Show that exact question. Excellent. So if you want to flip the slide. Mm -hmm. So in January, we worked very closely with the Chicago Auto Show and sent a survey out to prior attendees, so everybody who came in 2023. And we heard back from over 2,700 people. And 
as this whole lovely event started, you know, the conversation was, why is it important? What's happening? Why is the auto show important? Well, we know from looking at these survey results, first of all, 2,700 people replied to an online survey where they got nothing in return. Do you all take surveys? That was a big feat in itself. So from that, we know that 95% of the people who were here last year, they're planning on coming back. And we said, well, why are you coming back? What's your favorite thing about the auto show? Nine in 10, both men and women, nine in 10 were telling us it's to see the latest and greatest vehicles, which is awesome because they're all around us. Yeah. But on top of that, then a couple, other, a couple other responses came out. It was the no pressure salespeople. And you can start to see where we get a little difference here between the men and the women on the responses. It was the no pressure salespeople, the family entertainment, and even access to vehicle experts. So those were kind of the top reasons that surface for why the Chicago Auto Show is their favorite. What do they like mm -hmm. about coming here? And the other thing that was interesting is 70% told us they prefer shopping with multiple brands in one place. So they're able to go from brand to brand and not having to go dealership to dealerships. So you talked about the ability to do that quickly and how many Saturdays it would take up. Well, we can see here that's their preference. Mm -hmm. So if you want to flip. But then when we talked a little bit further about the actual vehicle shopping experience, it evokes a whole myriad of emotions. First of all, we know that from the people we talked to, 40% of them are planning on purchasing a vehicle within the next year. And half of those people are planning to spend between $40,000 and $75,000. So no small change. Now, the emotions get kicked in here because 40% of the people told us buying a car, it's a necessary evil. Some people are excited about it. You can see we've got about a third, about a third of women, a little more than that of men who say they're excited. We've got people who are thrilled and like they're really looking forward to this. But you can't overlook those who are a little apprehensive. And then when you start to get into the emotions of nervousness and anxiety, Look at how the difference there lies between men and women in that shopping experience. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, Haley, can you flip? Thanks. <laughs> awesome. So then we went even a little bit more and we're talking about knowledge levels. So you're a little anxious, you're a little apprehensive. Maybe you need to learn more about the product you're buying and that could help ease some of those feelings. Well, we started talking about EVs because it's all about EVs, whether it's all electric, hybrid, hybrid plug-in. So we wanted to know about knowledge levels. Only 9% of women told us that they felt they were extremely knowledgeable about EVs. 25% of men told us they're extremely knowledgeable. Now, should we talk about perception of knowledge and maybe some is overstated and some is understated? Yes, we should talk about that. <laughs> all right. So you can see we clearly have a knowledge gap when it comes to EVs and the need to learn about them and that technology. Well, we asked, how do you want to learn about this new automotive tech? Where are you turning? Because everybody goes online, right? That's the natural source to think, oh, I can find all this information online. But that didn't surface as the number one spot. It was they wanted to learn in person at the auto show. So you what this says is it's that personal interaction, it's the relationships with people, it's the ability to see and feel and talk to somebody in person about this. So yeah, keep the information online. Clearly that as a resource, but it can't just be online. It's about that interaction, that experiential experience here mm -hmm. at the show. And that is so key. And that is one of the reasons the Chicago Auto Show is so significant for us. But as we talk about EVs, EVs is one of those technologies that is definitely impacting our world cross the board. And there's a lot of conversation, there's still a lot of discussion around EVs and the impact and how do you prepare. And so we wanna step to the next question. And this is, so I'm gonna direct this to Trudy, to Trish. And so Trish, I'm gonna ask the question. Am I getting this right? So. When we come to the auto show, we hear a lot about new technologies, new interventions, and we have a chance to see them. So tell us a little bit about your research with EV and how you see the shopper experience. Thank you very much. So if you could go on to the next slide. Um, a lot of very similar insights when you start thinking about it. 
Um, we surveyed 1,000 women motorists last year and asked them a number of questions about electric vehicles. And we found some very similar kinds of themes. Only, you know, if we look at men that are out there, we have about 50% of men were looking at electric vehicles and considering that for their next vehicle. But only one in three women were considering an EV. And when we looked at why, we saw that 34% of them were not confident in their knowledge of EVs. And this was almost basically roughly 3% or three times as many versus men. And more than half of women had never been inside an electric vehicle. And almost half of women thought that charging sounded difficult. And both of those last data points are versus 38% of men. And so it's very interesting and telling, especially when you think about, and we surveyed EV owners as well, and we asked them what were the top three attributes that they thought were most beneficial of owning an EV. And one of the top items, aside from total cost of ownership, was actually the ease of charging at home. Um, it's really telling to know that once you own the vehicle and you're driving it, you see how wonderful the charging experience is. But before that happens, the idea of charging sounds very difficult. And so given those pieces of information and the fact that we see that women are a bit more reluctant or anxious maybe about going into the dealership, we're trying to make the process overall making it easier to try, easier to buy, and easier to own an EV because there is a lot of information and we wanna make that easier throughout the process. So if you go on to the next one, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing. For us, it starts first with a really comprehensive e-commerce platform that we developed, and it's called Nissan at Home. And the idea is that, you know, you've got a busy schedule, you may not want to be able to shop at the dealership, or you want to spend it in your own time. And so you can go online, browsing, browsing the vehicles, looking at information, and then when you're actually ready to go ahead and drive, you can schedule a test drive that starts right outside your front door, asking them questions, getting information on the vehicle, getting more comfortable with it. And when you're ready, you can buy it at home as well and it'd be delivered right to your doorstep. But we know it doesn't stop there because the whole process of getting an EV is about the ownership process as well. So we're making that easier as well. We see a lot of technology in the electric vehicles, a lot of great features, but it can be a little overwhelming at first. So one of the programs we've developed is a second delivery program, is what we call it. And that's where the consumer, once they buy the vehicle, can arrange to have someone come to their home, work, or wherever they'd like, and basically help answer questions, go over features, get more in depth about the vehicle and the product, and help them personalize it, and really make them comfortable with it, and make sure they're maximizing all the utilization. And it doesn't stop there either, because we know as you're driving, there could be things that you worry about happening. So we have one of the most, customer, most comprehensive customer care programs in the industry, and it's called EV Care Free Plus, and it includes uh, charging assistance, scheduled maintenance, an eight-year, 100,000-mile battery warranty, and uh, roadside assistance 24-7. So if you have an out-of-charge situation, you could have someone come help assist you. So all of these things to try to make it easier. And also, when we design the vehicle, we really try to focus on what consumers need. It's a decision that you want to make sure is practical. It's a head decision in terms of price and features, but it's also a heart decision in terms of design and styling. So we had a number of women designers on our team helping design the interior, and they specifically helped ensure that we're creating more of like a lounge inside the vehicle rather than just an SUV. And it's open, airy, big windows, the moonroof, and you have warm colors and soft touch surfaces, all of it making a really enjoyable interior cabin experience and making sure that the customer is getting everything that they're looking for in their purchase. And then finally, as I talked about, charging's the one thing that we see a lot of concerns around. We've developed a number of partnerships with various companies, knowing that we want to make charging as effortless as possible. And so we have a partnership right now with Wallbox, where the consumer can go on our website, nissanusa.com, and if they're looking at a vehicle, they can also purchase a home charger and schedule to have it installed. You don't have to worry about going to find your local electrician or anything. All of it can be taken care of right there in one place. And we've made partnerships as well for public charging. 
Uh, we were the first Japanese OEM to announce that we would be adopting the North American charging standard on the Tesla network, and that's going to provide a lot more accessibility and convenience for our consumers so that our drivers and owners today and in the future all feel more confident and comfortable about the charging options they'll have available to them. So trying to do a number of different things, covering all the gamut to try to make it as easy as we can. Well, that is perfect. And we recognize that the electrification journey, I mean, it's ongoing. And most of the OEMs have talked about the 2030 time period. But we also want to know, how does just when you think about the woman's journey, it's not all about EVs. So can you share some of the stats that you've come up with in terms of just the overall journey related to a vehicle purchase? Yeah, I mean, um, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here um, among such distinguished uh, females on stage. So real pleasure to be here. Uh, I think if we even just step up a little bit, and I'll try to connect a little bit of what Trisha and Amy were both saying together. Let's just walk around the auto show today. And for those of you that have been in the industry as long as I have, you can see even the way that we integrate our female product geniuses at an auto show, the way our lead instructor, uh, Stephanie, is at our EV test track. You can even just see the way that we employ women at an auto show has changed substantially. So I want to applaud that for just one second, because um, it is, it's really, really nice to see how women in automotive just generally have shifted in such powerful, respected positions. And I just want to take a, a moment to acknowledge that. I mean, you've heard from both Amy and Trisha, we research differently, we shop differently, we expect different experiences. And it's important that we deliver on, on those and that we make women feel comfortable along the entire purchase path. I mean, if you think it's difficult selling to a woman with four wheels, try it with two. We're only 10% of our riders in the United States are female. And that's a, a really, really big mission just to even overcome that confidence in getting on a motorcycle and let alone going into a dealership where you need to feel comfortable. Women do say that they are less um, educated or that they don't know as much about the product or maybe that they're saying that um, in comparison to their male counterparts, but educating women and making them feel comfortable in that dealership environment to ask questions, um, you know, and to feel comfortable um, when they walk into, you know, whether it's an auto show booth or whether it's into one of our stores. And I think that, that that's a big thing because women want to know about the product that they're buying and we have a responsibility to help educate educate and inform and I won't repeat what you said but online education is also you know very important um, as well as them coming here where they can experience all products you know in one place without that pressure or maybe even dare I say intimidation factor of the way that you feel walking into a dealership that is predominantly um, you know run by men and we need we it is changing um, but that just that takes time I guess secondarily we also need to educate women that there are great careers in automotive I mean look at um, you know uh, my my fellow fellow counterparts here on stage amazing accomplishments and that there are great opportunities for employment within the automotive industry I can tell you I did not dream of working for an automotive company when I was a little girl I seized the engine of my first car Yes, I did. It's a true statement. <laughs> Ask me later. But um, now I'm educated, informed, looking at product strategy of both our cars and our motorcycles. But that was an intimidation factor. It was something that I wasn't comfortable with. I read books. I spent time in the shop. I spent time with my product managers, and I immersed myself in it. So education is key for shoppers and also um, us as leaders of where we are within automotive. Um, we talked about charging infrastructure. I think safety is more important to women also than our, our male counterparts. We had our area managers from around the country driving our IX, so our all-electric SAV. And some of them said they were wildly uncomfortable with where they needed to charge their vehicle. So there's a, there's a fear factor of being exposed in some places that might not be the most desirable
desirable locations. So it's great that OEMs are partnering together. We're looking to expand that charging infrastructure, making it more accessible, making it you know just more convenient, but but also I think safe also for for owners as well, and, and especially female owners. So that's also a, a big mission of ours. Okay. And you can see some of the statistics here, and where you see that red exclamation mark, it means that that's statistically more relevant for a female shopper than it is for a male shopper. So you can see that, you know, you were talking about that the, the comfort, right, and that ride and handling and the softer side of the way we design our vehicles, the safety. Um, so you, you can see that that's, that's more important. Or, you know, what we're using it for. What, our personal uses for the vehicle. So very interesting, especially as we look down into the BEV um, you know, acceptance and um, great statistics that I think we were all really, really thrilled to see that they were, they were common statistics. So I think that helps us with at least the validity of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that we're trying to do it together. 100%. And I tell you, I mean, the data is so important. But what I'd like to do is let me ask the panelists a question related to key takeaways, right? So as a woman in this industry, we know so far that the Chicago Auto Show is critical for us in terms of giving us the opportunity to look at other vehicles. But what other tidbit would you share with the ladies that are out there as they think about just this whole purchase process and purchase journey? Amy, why don't we start with you? I would say looking at the research and extrapolating that out to other women shoppers, you know, we know that from other work we do with shows that about a quarter of the people who come to the shows every year are new, they've never been there before. And I would say that to women out there, if you're looking for a car, you're thinking about a new vehicle, you've got this amazing platform for that in-person experience to learn about the vehicles and the new technology. 100%. Trish, what about you? I think the fact is, is that we as women, we really value information from outside sources. So I'm going to tell you, we're going to do everything we can as a company to give you information. But I also think there's a lot of great reputable sources through social media, other people that you can see that represent your lifestyle. And you can see how that makes sense for them. It's going to work for me as well. And that's been a big thing with electric vehicles all along. Once somebody experiences it, as we've seen with our Nissan Leaf, we have over 60% loyalty, they love it, and they really appreciate the features, they want to come back and drive electric vehicles. So talking to people that drive them, finding out someone who's similar lifestyle to yours that it works okay, that's a really good data point to realize this can work for me. And maybe the only thing I would add is I think the power of influencers too, and as we look at younger, a younger generation of, of drivers um, coming into the marketplace, they don't have the same preconceived notions um, toward electrification that maybe you know uh, the, the older generations, boomers and Gen X do. So I think we have a real opportunity with younger drivers. We know statistically they're not getting their license as quickly. I mean, I couldn't wait to get my license, but um, it's it's a whole new generation. I've got a 24-year-old um, at home, but they're they're also um, more open to you know on new technology and um, they don't have any preconceived notions of the past so I think we have a real opportunity there and I would tell you what I would add is as you walk around the show ask questions yeah. take a moment to really look at what's there even if that's not the one that's on your your bucket list because all of the OEMs are making changes because technology is giving us the ability for us to do better do more, more efficiently, and that is just such a key thing because the automotive industry is all about technology. So, I will finish it up. I'm not sure how much time. I have 15. Okay, so that gives us an opportunity to reach out to the crowd. Does anyone have questions before I keep running down my list? And we do have a microphone so you don't have to shout. No one has questions? I, okay, thank you. And I have a present for you since you're the first one to volunteer. Let me just tell you, I like presents. I like being bold, courageous, take a moment, step up. All right, so I'm looking at all you other ladies because you know, I'll be coming thank to you. you next. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Hi, um, I was, your statistics, statistics are great. What I'm really curious about is what keeps women 
from coming to auto shows. And I didn't know if any of you had done any of that research because I will say I'm a lifelong automotive enthusiast, but I always felt really intimidated to go to an auto show. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like, I think it was just like a voice thing. And I wondered if there was any statistical evidence around that or if you guys had done any research around that. That's a great question. I don't have any hard stats on that, but I would lean on looking at those emotions that are evoked when it comes to vehicle shopping, and you think about the anxiety and the apprehension and the nervousness, and kind of that education gap. Like, I think it all speaks to the opportunity for women to really embrace an event like this, but maybe they don't realize what they can get out of it. I might come back to one of the statements that I made up front when you think or you see photos from an auto show. I also, you know, you look at do the people look like me or are there people that I feel comfortable being around? And I think that's evolved and it's changed. We also talked about the role of our female product geniuses and also women like to ask other women questions. They're, they just feel more at ease. And I think that our, our, the way that our roles have, have shifted over over the years is making it more comfortable although I don't have any statistics um, I, to, to prove that and I, actually that would be a great study because there's always to me a certain part of it that's culture so if you walk into a room and you're not seen and being embraced women tend to back up and that one experience once they get it they won't come back and so how do we make sure that we're making them feel heard, understood, as well as their questions. Because women will do research before they ever walk into the door. So it's not that they're coming in blind. They have specific questions, specific information that they want. And if you're not addressing that, if you're giving me your talk track instead of answering my questions, that plays a big part in terms of whether or not I find the answers that I need at the show. Great question. Do we have any other questions? Come on, don't. all right, that's what I'm saying, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Sue Mead. Welcome. I'm wondering whether you see dealers and other groups having more women only events through dealerships. And also, this is a little one off perhaps, but as someone who's done a lot of off roading and off road racing, I see more and more women wanting to buy a car that can take them into the back country and. Um, I can name some of those vehicles, the Jeep portfolio, Broncos, and th trucks, those kinds of vehicles, which is very exciting. So I'm wondering if there's anything, I know a few Marks, uh, OEs, have had programs, but I'm wondering if that's something that's being developed or thought about. So I guess I just wanted to start with the dealership aspect is I definitely see many women moving into dealerships, moving into the automotive industry. Um, we're seeing great representation and I think they bring excellent insights with them on how to approach women and really provide a safe environment to provide education, make them feel comfortable, give them opportunities for test drives and so forth. So I do hope we continue to see evolution in that transaction and the interaction. Um, I don't know if I the second part of it? I, I, am, I might jump in on, the, on the, um, the, the driving aspect of it. We have two driving academies, our performance center on the East Coast and the West Coast. And we do offer um, driving experiences that are all female days for those that want to come in and maybe not feel as intimidated out there on the track um, riding amongst the men. We do a buy one, get one, and you bring a friend. Um, we do it with riding experiences as well. So we offer, we offer off-road adventure on two wheels as well as our um, SAV vehicles at, at, at both locations. So we offer those experiences so um, that you have that choice, whether you want to be there um, in, a, in a, you know, kind of a, a mixed company environment or if you want to wait for an all-female uh, class. So I'll add to, to the comments that were made. I've spent almost 30 years in this industry and working with dealers, there are dealers that are doing a lot and then there are dealers that are making small progress. So of course I gotta give a shout out to Mr. Mirabanian with Fox Valley Auto Group because he has and he supports women in this space. So there are dealers that get it. 
there are dealers that need to get it better, and there are dealers that haven't got it yet, and that's why we continue programs like this. But there are more and more women that are stepping into this industry, and I will tell you that's because they are seeing the women that are here. And we appreciate you all for being here. Now, so I have time for one more question if we have one. Hi, my name is Felicia. Hello, so thank Felicia. you for this conversation. Um, I'm here to represent moms because I'm looking to buy a car in six months. I used to live in New York. We didn't even need a car in New York, so now I'm back in Chicago. But the question is, what advice do you have for women that you mentioned careers in the industry that are trying to pivot into the auto industry with no experience? And maybe do you have any ideas for entrepreneurship opportunities in the industry? Anyone want to take that? I would say one of the things that we've done research on is we found that women buyers, which there's a lot of women buyers and shoppers, want to shop and have a women sales consultant. We did research on this in Japan and found that that was a very important item. Both women and men wanted to have women there. So I would say a great place to go would be onto the sales floor. There's great opportunities. People would be very receptive, I think, often to having a woman. And organizations like mine, we're doing a lot of work right now, whether it's with uh, a younger girls in school trying to help make sure that they see opportunities or out in the community. But there's, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. I think a lot of it is just taking the leap, right? Taking a chance to ask a question, what opportunities might you have for me? Because there's a lot of things happening and, and a lot more than probably is out there is just as evident, like immediately. Once you ask, there's a whole world. 100%. I'll give you a true, true story. I left JLR as a manager and I came over to BMW, went down two levels as a specialist to help launch Mini. And I did it because I knew get your foot in the door. Getting your foot in the door is, is the first thing. So you've got to, you got to get in, you got to prove yourself, you got to learn the product, learn the services, learn the business, and you can go wherever you want to go. I'm living proof of it. Sorry, I just want to add real quick. I did the same thing. I've gone backwards twice. So you can't be afraid to go backwards in order to go forwards. Sometimes you need to take a step back to get more experience and expertise. And if you believe in yourself and you know that you can perform well, you'll have great opportunities that come out of it. And I'll finalize the comment with saying that <laughs> I'll be doing the Chicago Career Fair on Tuesday. And there are so many opportunities in the automotive industry whether you want to help build cars, design cars, sell cars. I mean, there is so much out there. And just reach out to any of the ladies or any of the audience about what opportunities, and I'm sure you'll find a lot, because there is so much that you can do in this industry that has done so much for all of us. I want to take time to definitely invite you to join us at the BMW Innovative uh, session right after this. Thank you for your time, and continue to uh, support women. We rock. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation and lots of good questions out there. Um, so just to kind of take a step back, we began this awards program. This is our third year now, and it has grown tremendously. We mentioned it briefly at the start of the presentation. Uh, you know, we had 66 retailer nominations this year. That's just incredible. And so I'm looking out in the audience and recognize a lot of familiar faces and want to thank all of our retailers for coming out, taking a day out of the dealership. We know how much, um, you know, that means to us and, and we know how hard it is for you. So with that, um, I wanted to introduce another amazing female in the industry, Kelly Webb Roberts. Kelly Webb is our uh, CATA chairwoman. And she won't say this, so I'll say it for her, but she is the first uh, female CATA chairwoman in its history. Um, so again, you know, this is a first for, for many, many reasons. So with that, I'll uh, let Kelly come up and introduce the first award. Thanks, Jen, and thanks to all of you for being here. Grateful that you're taking time out of your day to join us and really appreciate all the men that are in the audience here. Um, I'm presenting the Industry Trailblazer Award, which is for a female employed by an automaker, auto retailer, or core automotive supplier. Job title no higher than vice president, works primarily in North America, 
She may be notable for her empowerment of others, her breaking down of barriers that allows others to follow, her pursuit of non-traditional roles or jobs, her leadership, and taking on additional roles such as leading an employee resource group or mentoring program. Award nominees this year were Kathy Gilbert, CDK, CDK Global, Shelley Pratt, Infinity, Felicia Ray, Lynn's Nissan City, and then our award finalists were Ashwini, I'm gonna butcher this name, Ballas Bermanian, General Manager, Advanced Engineering, Harley Davidson Motor Company, Ola B.C. Boyle, Vice President, Product Planning and Mobility Strategy, Hyundai Motor North America, Lori Transu, Chief Program Engineer, Ford Motor Company. And I'm proud to say our winner this year is Ola B.C. Boyle, Hyundai Motor North America. Ola B.C. couldn't be with us today, but another amazing woman from Hyundai, Tia Battle, General Manager Central Region, is going to accept on her behalf. And as she comes up here, I'm just going to read a little bit about Ola B.C. Ola B.C. Boyle is the Vice President of Product Planning and Mobility Strategy for Hyundai, North, Hyundai Motor North America. Boyle is responsible for guiding the strategic direction of Hyundai's U.S. vehicle lineup, leading long-range planning, and overseeing market research, business analytics, and advanced pricing. In just three years, Olabisi has made a huge impact on Hyundai's success and direction, including leading the expansion of Hyundai vehicles into the Tesla charging network by 2024, as well as pioneering the Hyundai Home Initiative, launching the Evolve Plus EV subscription program, and introducing in-vehicle payments She's also received significant accolades throughout her career, including being named at an Automotive News All-Star in 23 and 21, and making it to the list of 100 leading women in the North America auto industry in 2020. And so, thank you for coming. So after reading, hearing everything that Kelly said about BC, you can understand uh, that's why she can't be here today. Um, she is busy trailblazing, innovating, and being a leader and an example, especially to individuals like myself who work um, for Hyundai as well. So today it is my honor indeed to accept this award on behalf of BC. And I just wanted to share some unique advice that she's given to various women who work for Hyundai, myself included. She says that being a woman in a predominantly male industry can be a challenge. It is important to stay strong by ensuring you are built up and never puffed up. To be built up, do your homework. Make sure you are prepared and educated on the topic and work to persevere and remain resilient and positive in all these situations. Because once you're built up, you will be able to allow your competence and your excellence to speak for you while going through any tough time. If you work to hold on to your peace, you'll always be on your best game. You want to come in every day, show up with the right attitude and the sunshine and the rain. Those are words that Olabisi lives by every single day. And now she asked me to share this additional message with you. Thank you so much. Thank you to Scotty for being an inspiration to all women and leading with a girl's guide to cars. Thank you to all the nominated leaders who are doing their thing every single day to support the industry and women. And thank you, Michelle and Hyundai, for working to be a place where we can try to do the best we can to push the industry forward and create change so that everyone is included, feels they belong, and has the opportunity to do their best. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tia. And next up, we have Sue Mead presenting Best in Craft Media Award. Good afternoon. This award recognizes a full-time or part-time North American journalist, content creator, or a media member with a focus on the automotive industry. She demonstrates general excellence of craft, supports women and her colleagues in the automotive industry, or through voice and narrative, creates more accessible 
automotive information, and more inclusive automotive storytelling. I'm going to read the award nominees. If you're here, please stand. Elizabeth Blackstock, Jan Griffiths, Mercedes Lilienthal, Shia Milchteen, Connie Peters, Brenda Pretty, and the award finalists were Abigail Bassett, Jill Simonello, and Elena Scher. The winner is Jill Simonello. Let me tell you why. Jill launched her career in 2001 as the auto editor for Pioneer Press newspapers. She soon began writing reviews with a female perspective and a keen eye toward the interests of many general consumers covering topics such as driving position, cargo space, vehicle amenities, and seat comfort, and went on to work for the Chicago Sun-Times Chicago Tribune, and Sinclair Broadcast Group, among many other outlets. Today, Jill is the managing editor of Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk and works with Consumer Guide Automotive, writing reviews and hosting podcasts and radio shows. These are only a few of the things that are on the list. Along the way, Jill was the first female president of the Midwest Automotive Media Association, she is a juror on the North American Car and Truck of the Year jury and the Women's World Car jury. Of great significance is Jill's role as an early adopter of new technologies and social media platforms, embracing Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as podcasting, blogging, and now TikTok. Her Rebel Rally partner, Kristen Vander Hayes Shaw, who won this award last year and was not able to be here today, Kristen asked me to say, she is fierce, brilliant, and truly special in the field as she lifts up other women in the industry. Her work partner, Tim Estradal, of Pickup Truck Talk added, she stands out. She is not afraid to get into a sports car or to be the small woman in a big truck. She's a leader and inspiration to many and a trailblazer. It's an honor for me to present Jill Simonello with this award. I just didn't make it through. I love you. <laughs> so first I have to thank Sue Mead for lowering the microphone for me so I don't have to go through that. <laughs> Um, I, I want to be brief, but obviously I wouldn't be a journalist if I didn't have at least one story to tell. And um, when I first started writing about cars, uh, I was working for a Pioneer Press newspaper, so people who are Chicago-paced may remember that. And I was the automotive editor and started writing stories and reviews and things like that. And I got an email from a guy who told me that I wrote like a 16-year-old girl. I was like, hmm. Maybe I should think about that for a second. So I went out to a couple of friends and I, 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 you know, that I'd met in the industry at MAMA at Midwest Automotive Media Association. And I was like, um, can you read my stuff and tell me if I write like a 16-year-old girl? And, and this was uh, <coughs> 20 years ago. Um, so this was a while ago. And um, they read my stuff and they're like, no, you do not write like a 16-year-old girl. And I was like, OK. Um, but I want to say that this experience really helped kind of shape my voice and my, I'm like horn, um, my <laughs> squirrel, uh, but it helped shape my voice and kind of really helped shape who I am as an auto writer because I had to make some decisions about what I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. And I just decided at the end of the day, like I wasn't going to be an enthusiast writer. I wasn't going to be somebody who was writing for probably a buff book. What I wanted to do is I wanted to write for the real person. So I decided to keep my voice real. I decided to talk about things like, where does your purse go? Uh, how do you fit in here? Like, can you see over the hood? How does the steering wheel work? Where, where does the stuff go in the cargo area? And I've kind of kept that with me throughout all of my time in journalism. And I've gone from newspapers to online journalism to blogging to TikTok to media to, I mean, I, I was in broadcast journal, I've, I've done it all. 
but I just wanted to be real, and I, I hope that comes through in everything that I do. And I just, I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and I hope that also comes through. But I do want to say, I wouldn't be where I am without the support and the help of a lot of people. And, you know, the first two mentors I ever had in this business were men. It was Tom Appel and Kirk Bell. They were the ones that I essentially conscripted into service and said, uh, yeah, you got to read this and tell me if I write like a 16-year-old girl. And, you know, you go on and you have Sue Mead, who was one of the first women auto writers I ever met. And, you know, 20 years ago, there were not a lot of us. And she has been an amazing mentor for me. And, you know, you have Scotty and Jennifer Moran, who are trailblazers themselves. And, you know, but there, there, there have been a lot of men in my life. And, you know, Tim Estradal, who I'm currently working with at Pickup Truck Talk, uh, you know, he's been great. My husband, my dad, all of these people have supported me. And I just, I really appreciate it. And I hope that I can pay it forward. And so I just want to say that if anybody out there ever needs help or needs advice or needs anything from me, um, I definitely want to pay that forward. And I would like to, um, help. So find me, ask me if it's in my power, I want to do it. And I just want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank uh, what drives her for the award and for Jen Moran and Scotty working together to create this amazing event because as they said during the presentation, women are essentially 85% of the buying power in the automotive industry. And we need to have a voice and we need to understand that voice. We need to relate to that voice. And I just, I, you know, I thank, I thank you guys for creating this because this is so important. So thank you. Thank you, Sue, and congratulations, Jill. Our next award is the Best Automotive Retail, and here to present that award is Soledad Romero. Soledad, come on up. Good afternoon, everyone. Super excited to be back this year, taking part into the What Drives Her ceremony to introduce this year's award winner for the Best Retail Award. This amazing woman, who I'm about to present, is an employed employee of a Chicago area dealership who demonstrates a high level of commitment and drive to any task at hand, whether it's in sales, service, or technical support. As mentioned, this year we had over 60 nominees. Congratulations to everybody who was nominated. Top three award finalists for this year are, and I apologize for the pronunciation of any names that I mispronounce, Gabrielle Abinian, General Manager at Fox Valley Buick GMC in Volkswagen, Amanda Pickett, BDC Manager Finance Manager, Advantage Chevrolet of Bridgeview, and Jennifer Tanili, Controller, Mike Anderson Chevrolet of Maryville. I'm excited to announce this year's winner, Gabriel Avinian of Fox Valley, Volks, uh, Fox Valley Volkswagen. <laughs> Growing up in a dealership, Gabriel has always been driven and passionate and following her father's footsteps and pursuing a career in automotive industry. In 2017, Gabrielle joined her family's auto group as an operations manager. This opportunity led to her becoming the general manager of Fox Valley Buick GMC. It was at this time she was introduced to the General Motors Minority Dealer Development Program through her Dealer 20 group 
and is now a member of the GM Dealer Development National Candidate Pool. In efforts to diversify her experience within the Outer Group's, Outer Group's portfolio, Gabriela is now the general manager of Fox Valley Volkswagen. Through obedience leadership, she has helped her Volkswagen store set records in sales, as well as breaking the service parts store grows of all time three times in 2023. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this incredible honor. Um, thank you to the Chicago Auto Show, uh, the Chicago Automobile Trade Association. Um, this means a lot to me. Um, I did not know that I had to make a speech today, but um, I did want to piggyback off of the panel discussion. I believe the young woman named Felicia asked a question about how to get your foot in the door in the automotive industry and I just wanted to say there are so many different ways that you can do that especially on the retailer level the dealership level I'd love to talk to you after um, after this this award ceremony and just tell you all the different ways that this the automotive industry has changed my life um, there's so many different ways that I can't tell you how many employees that I have that they were just in a completely different place before they were able to have an experience that um, really set the trajectory of their life onto a different path. Um, my dad, he was an immigrant from the Philippines when he came to this country and he did not have the money to go to college. This changed everything for my family. So thank you so much again. Thank you to my family. I love you guys. Thank you for your support and yeah. Thank you, ladies, and congratulations, Gabrielle. Well done. So our final award today is Automotive Ally. And I'm going to say diversity is something that we have been in the automotive business before diversity was a buzzword in corporate America. <laughs> automotive has been a diverse field for a long time, 40 years and more because we needed to be, and we're going to be a diverse uh, industry going forward. But it also is a bit of a head scratcher because if you are not a person who identifies as a diverse group who n would like assistance and like an opportunity, what do you do? I'm not a brown person, so I don't understand what it's like to be in the shoes of that person. What can you do? you can be an ally. It took me a while to wrap my mind around the idea of what an ally is. It's not super clear, and, but it is really important. So I'm hoping that you'll go with me for a minute, with us for a minute, because I want to talk about this. And I'd like to introduce Cheryl Thompson. Come on up, Cheryl. She is the founder of the Center for Automotive Inclusion, Diversity, and Advancement. Did I get that right? Kadia. And Kadia's mission is to, now Cheryl founded Kadia after 33 years as an engineer at Ford, <laughs> and then um, has dedicated her second career to helping companies create diversity in their organizations in a way that is strategic, and it's beneficial, and it's not an afterthought, and it's certainly not a buzzword. So Cheryl, my first question for you is, what is an ally? Uh. What is an ally? That's such a good question because it means so many different things. It's not just one. I think we saw a beautiful example when Sumit lowered the microphone for Jill. That was a beautiful example <laughs> of allyship. Um, there was a woman I know, her name is Mackenzie, and she has a hearing impairment. And she's always having to ask people to speak up. 
And she told me the greatest display of uh, allyship was when her boss in a meeting said, you know, he did that for her. He said, can you please speak up so everyone can hear? So she didn't have to do that. So uh, being an ally is advocating for someone who has less power or influence than you, somebody that is historically been on the margins. Um, so it is using your social or political capital uh, to pull someone else forward. So sometimes that mean, may mean opening a door for someone. Sometimes it's actually letting them know, hey, there's a door over here, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's what it, it's, it means something different and it's very situational. And so what is the importance of allies in an organization? Well, I think if you have a culture of allyship, it's a culture of helping. And, you know, we underestimate the impact of th that our actions can have. You know, one little moment of allyship may not seem like a big thing to you, but it can change somebody's day and even their life. Um, so when we think about that, what does it look like in an organization? It could look like changing systems and policies to make sure they're equitable for, for all. It could mean just lending a helping hand, like asking someone to speak up in a meeting so everyone else can hear. But I think overall, it improves performance, it improves innovation, and psychological safety, you know, encouraging that speak up culture. And then last, if you are someone who would like an ally or find yourself in need of an ally, what makes a good ally? Or you want to be an ally, what makes a good ally? I think a good ally is someone that has a spirit of generosity. Right? It's not all about them. They want to know more about you and how they can help you. They want to know, how can I make you successful? So they have high expectations for everyone on their team, and they've got this mindset of continuous improvement. How can we make things better? So you know that outward thinking, not all about me, and, and generous spirit. That's what I look for in an ally. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. So our final award for the day, Automotive Ally, our finalists are Cheryl Thompson, Dean Case, and Wendy Orthman. And the winner is Wendy Orthman of Genesis. So Wendy was unfortunately not able to be here today. Um, they're prepping for their big golf tournament and she was not able to join us, I'm sad to say. But she did send a message. Thank you, Scotty and Jen Morand. I love calling you Madam President. I still remember your first day as an intern. Um, so excited to see your rise uh, to lead the Chicago Auto Show. I am terribly sorry that I can't be there today, but I cannot tell you how honored I am to accept this award as an ally. Um, I am the daughter of two public school teachers and started in the car business at the age of 20 before I could legally drink, in fact. And if it weren't for the grace of some incredibly pioneering, badass women that were um, helping me along the way to mentor and develop and guide me, I would not be here today. So it has absolutely been my life's mission to make sure that I am paying that back and paying it forward. So there are probably as few awards you could offer me other than maybe Mother of the Year <laughs> that would mean more than this one. So thank you so much to the What Drives for Organization, to Scotty and Jen, to Kristen Vander Shaw for the kind nomination. Uh, I, it means the world to me, and thank you so much. Congratulations, Wendy. And that concludes our program for this year. Please keep your uh, email, eye out in your email for nominations for next year, which will go out in our call for nominations will go out in December. We want to hear from everybody. Thank you for joining us.